Hey, it's Jeff from Home Renovation DIY. Today I'm filming a video that has been actually one of the most requested videos that we've ever had. And we were originally going to try to reach out to like a Home Depot or a Lowe's and do a tour down their fastener aisle. Because today we're going to teach you all about fasteners, all the tips and tricks for construction, and make sure that you don't buy the wrong product and get screwed. Anyway, the point of this video today is we're still in lockdown, so we're going to film it here. And that gives us an added advantage of being able to incorporate some of the tools that you can use and talk a little bit more in depth about the process and I think you're going to like this. So, without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into this. We have a construction screw. Now this is a three inch screw, it's a number eight. It is a pretty good steel screw with a zinc coating. The idea here is, is that you can pretty much attach anything to anything with this thing and it does most of the heavy lifting. Most of the situations you're going to use this is when you're doing some light framing or you're doing some back framing or adding blocking for your towel rods and that sort of thing in the wall before you close. This is for interior use only. Similarly, we have the exterior screw and these are decking screws. Now, they're not as strong as the interior screw, but they do have a coating that protects them against the wood itself and the weather. And they come in different colors, so you can pick a green or a brown depending on the kind of finished material you're working with. Moving on to the next kind of screw, we have the flooring screw. Now the flooring screw and the drywall screw, which is this family here, they look a lot alike. They're both black and they both have a similar um, shaft thickness and a similar length. The difference in it is in the fact that a drywall screw has one continuous size of thread, where the flooring screw has a, a thin and a thick thread in it. And it's designed, this actually pulls and laminates wood together. So this is more of a wood lamination screw. If I was to drive this all the way down, it would pull this piece and this piece really tight together and bond it into one. And that's why when we're doing tile work, we use flooring screws on our new plywood into the OSB in order to get that extra strength. Now, floor, drywall screws come in three different types. They come in the coarse thread, which is designed for wood the fine thread, which is designed if you're using metal framing, and then they have a laminating screw. Now the laminating screw is for attaching drywall to drywall. It's not very common in a lot of residential situations, but I do use this screw a lot if I'm covering up an old popcorn ceiling. One of the things you can do is you can take a drywall lift, put your sheet of drywall on it, put a coat of drywall compound on it, just a thin skim coat, lift it into the existing ceiling, and then use a laminating screw to attach the two sheets and it'll hold it there until everything dries together and then you've got a brand new flat ceiling. That is one way that you can avoid scraping off the old asbestos or trying to re-coat and re-skim. Just put on a new layer, lose the half an inch and you'll be happier for it. Now, this next screw is the blue screw. This is called the Tapcon. This screw is used for attaching wood to concrete. This screw usually requires you to pre-drill the hole, and if you're smart, you'll buy the kit that has the screws and the right bit to work together. That'll make sure that they stay nice and snug. The secret for using this screw is when you drill the hole, just drill it in one direction. Don't continually clean the hole, because the dust that's left in the hole is what these threads are using to create the compression so that you don't have the upward lift. Now, all of these screws have got one thing in common. We have a building code for when you drill a hole in a stud, Okay, the screw should not be thick enough that it can penetrate the wood and get to that hole. Remember, this should be one and a quarter inches from the front of a stud to where the hole is. And then when you buy in your screws, you buy the, the, the corresponding screws so that you're never going to go past that point. So you have one and a quarter plus a half. You'd never go more than one and three quarters on drywall. Standard on half inch drywall is one and a quarter. On 5 8 drywall, it's 1 and 5 8 and they get longer and longer depending on fire code so that you can actually put two layers of drywall for soundproofing and fire related issues. But always keep in mind, you don't want your screw penetrating to the middle. And when you're building, if you do have that happen, the next fastener you need is right here. If you're too close to the edge, you can always stick this and it just, it just hammers into place and it can cover the wood so that screws can't drive through it and penetrate any wires or plumbing. Okay, so just remember when you're building, if you have your holes too close to the front, whether you're getting an expected or not, use these. They will save you a fortune in fire and flood repairs later. Yeah, the next set of screws are just all the different variations for different specific purposes. So we've got our basic wood screw here. You'll see it's got a pan head, and the idea there is you screw it into something, and that's supposed to finish flush with your surface. All right, this is really common in cabinetry when you're attaching two cabinets together or if you're just doing any kind of woodwork. The next one is a specific 
particle board cabinet screw. It's got a much thicker thread on it, okay, and it also has a flat head. This one sits on the surface. So in situations like if you're attaching laminate countertops and you want to make sure when you drive your screw in, it stops and doesn't poke out the other side, <laughs> that can come in really handy. This screw here is really short. It's absolutely adorable. And what it is, is a self-tapping screw. And I'll just show you here. This type of screw is used, generally speaking, if you're using metal framing in your house or your basement. And what it does is it pre-drills the hole in the metal and then it has a nice fine thread so it can tie two pieces of metal together. Brilliant little idea. If you're attaching things that are metal, self-tappers are great. Just remember, if you have to attach something and you think it's gonna work, don't use the wrong screw. This one in particular does not hold into wood worth a darn. The threads are too small. Half of the screw is just a drill bit. So it's really useless with wood. The next one is called a soffit screw. And this is the kind of screw you can use outside. It comes painted in a bunch of different colors to match the different metal flashing you're using around your house. You can attach your gutters and your eaves troughs and all your downspouts, even a little bit of finished soffit and fascia work. And this comes in really handy. The next one is also an exterior screw. Okay, and it has a rubber gasket on it. it comes with a painted surface in a variety of colors. So if you're putting up any sheet metal or corrugated roofing, anything that you want to have a nice watertight seal, you can drive that one in. And this is a hex head. I don't even know if that's the right bit. Yep, okay. And it drives in, and you can buy a kit like this. It's got five or six different varieties on it for about 10 bucks, and it's really handy. And they just pop in and out and lock into these bit drivers, no problem. So the next type of screw is actually for doing exterior work. This is a structural screw. And you can tell it's structural because it has a code written on the head. Okay? Anytime a fastener has a code written on the head of it, it means it's designed for structure and it has a rating so that inspectors can tell if it's the right kind of rating for what's being used. All right? These can be used as screws instead of nails for all your joist hangers. This is an end run joist hanger, so you can actually go flush up against another surface. And you use your hex bed and you drive it in. Now, remember, when you're working with your joist hangers, you put one screw in every hole, including on the sides. Okay? Really important to put the screws in the sides as well, because when you put your, your wood in here, you want it to not just sit on it, you want it to not be able to pull away. Okay, so really crucial, once you get your wood in, tighten it up on the sides as well. The next kind of fastener is again for joist hangers, and it's the joist hanger nail. And you'll see it's got a stamp, and it's got a number. That's the Simpson Strong Tie N8. Now these kind of codes are very important in construction. If you're reading blueprints or you've got a design from a structural engineer, it'll tell you exactly which fastener to use and you've got to have the corresponding fastener as what's on the blueprints or your inspector's going to fail your job. <laughs> now, instead of using a hammer or nail to put those on, you can use one of these. This is a palm nailer. This is a brilliant invention and it's different from the drill because this is a really short drill, but look how much lower profile that is. You can get this in just about any space and all you do is you hook it up to your compressor and you set it on your nail and you drive it. Done. The other way you can do it is you can set it up in your nailer, put the point in that hole that you want to put in, and then just drive it in. It doesn't take any effort. You're not going to be swinging a hammer all day. You don't risk hitting your thumb or smashing things around. And you can drive a joist hanger in really quick using one of these. They're only like 100 bucks. You can get them at the Home Depot. I actually got this free as a complimentary tool when I bought some other tool a couple years ago. I don't use it because I don't do a lot of decks, but hey, it's a lot of fun. Now that we're dealing with nails, we'll go away from the screws and get into the nails. We're going to start with some of the tiniest ones that are really, really effective. This is a panel nail. This doesn't look like much, and it's not. It's designed for attaching paneling to walls. So for everybody who loves the 70s, and you can get these in a variety of different colors. They are available at any store. You just hard to find them sometimes because they stick them on the top shelf out of the way. <laughs> not very common, but if you've got repairs or you're going to be installing any kind of thin veneer paneling, this is the one for you. Next is the blue ring drywall nail. This is the one that I love to use when I'm doing my drywall, putting on my corner beads. And if you want to see how that installation happens, you can click the link to this video right here and we'll put in a card and you can check out how to put on a corner bead properly because there is a right and a wrong way to do that. All right, next down the list. It's a funny looking thing called the cap nail. Now, you're smart, you go to a store where you can buy these things in bulk because in the package it's really expensive. 
I like to buy all my fasteners in bulk, and so I like to shop at a store where I can do that. I find that when you're buying bulk by the pound, it's generally about half the price as buying them in a box at a predetermined price. I don't know why, but this is the way to shop. This plastic cap and this nail is designed to go on your exterior house wrap. Now, I know we've all done it. We've done the videos, we've used staples. I mean, my God, would you love staples on house wrap, right? But the point is the house wrap has these little red squares and that's where these are supposed to go, all right? The house wrap is designed by the company and if you use these caps, they actually have a warranty attached to the installation on your house wrap that you don't get if you use staples. Now we all cheat in most cases because it's cheaper, it's faster, and in a lot of cases we put the house wrap on and we're covering it right away with another product. But if you're in a situation where you're going to be relying on that house wrap for any extended period of time and you're going to get high winds, having this cap will keep your house wrap from getting ripped off the wall and getting your house soaking wet. And that is money in the bank. Next up are your regular framing nails. Now, a lot has changed in the world of nails. We used to have what was a common nail. It was just a smooth shaft. And then you got the Ardox. It's got a twisted shaft. And that it gives a better bite. It's got a bit of a screw property. So it doesn't pull straight out all the time. But nowadays what we're using is we're using this. We're using pneumatic nailers. And so we've got a couple of different sizes here. You'll see that there's a different length. In the construction code, you're supposed to use a three and a half inch nail when you're using framing to attach two by fours, plates and studs. This isn't even three and a half. This is actually three and a quarter. It's a little shorter, so don't get confused. If you are framing, the three and a quarter air nail fastener still passes code. Okay, so don't get your knickers in a knot if you're looking for nails for your framer. Oh, I need three and a half inch nails. No, you don't. This will work fine. And that's for any dimensional lumber that you're building your house with. These shorter ones are actually if you're attaching strapping or asponite sheeting. Okay, they're a little lighter gauge and a little smaller. And I'll show you this in a second here. There's the difference, okay? Now you'll see that when they should come firing through, there's a bit of a resin on these nails. So that's nailing and an adhesive property. All right? And so that's the short one and that's the long one. Now remember, when you're working with these things, if you happen to nail your finger, you got about a half a second to rip your finger off that nail until it's glued on. <laughs> so be extremely careful when you're working with that tool. <sighs> I can't stress enough how important it is to never let that go through your skin because once it's glued on, you're not ripping that off without destroying yourself. All right, now, let me get away from all this kind of stuff. This is the staples that we're talking about. And generally, when you're using staples, you're gonna use a hammer that's a T50. That's the kind of rating you're looking for. This hammer here is a T50, it says so on the handle, and you get the corresponding staple. There are different sizes, so make sure you get the right one. These staples are perfect. It's a 3 8 inch, and it is really ideal for attaching vapor barrier or your house wrap. You can go up to half an inch. The problem with half an inch is you gotta hit it a lot harder to sink the head. If your staples aren't sunk properly, and you leave it raised, then you gotta turn it around and hammer it in. Okay, because if you leave it like this and you put your drywall over top, believe it or not, that'll actually break through the surface of the drywall and it'll cause you a lot of damage and waste a lot of time. So, 3 8 staple works great. You can hit it and sink it. If you go to half inch, you're probably gonna see that a lot more often. That's why I recommend the 3 8 Next up is pass load nails for the air nailer. It's the finish nailer. You see me use this. This nailer is the workhorse for finished carpentry for DIYers because you only need one. Now, I have three different nailers, the 16, the 18, the 23 gauge, but I generally use the 18 gauge religiously because it's the workhorse. Now, a two inch nail, keeping in mind what we talked about earlier, that hole, all right, is a little bit long for most applications. So if I have drywall and baseboard and I'm using a two inch nail, if that is a thin baseboard or my hole's just a little bit off or the pressure's on the gun just a little bit too much and it sinks a little too deep into the surface, you can actually penetrate water lines and electrical lines. So these actually come in one inch all the way up to two inch. I suggest if you're using it for trim work, 
go for the inch and a quarter or inch and a half. Make sure that whatever the thickness of the material you're attaching to the wall, you've got the thickness of the material plus the half inch for the drywall plus half inch into the wood. Okay? If you get half inch into the wood, that fastener is going to work great. Generally speaking, all your trim doesn't need a lot. You're going to cock it all to the wall anyway. So getting a half inch into the wood, it's a nice safe bet. All right. Next kind of fastener we have is a narrow crown stapler. Not as common, but you know, if you're getting into a lot of woodwork or if you have really thin trim, this can be extremely handy. This is inch and a quarter. Looks like a brad nail. Can you see that? Not a brad nail. And the idea of this is behind, you know, we call it economy baseboard. It's about a one quarter of an inch thick, all right? It's like a finger joint pine. It's all over the place in new construction. And it can be three and a half inches tall, but it's super thin. And when you get into installing that with a brad nailer, with this type of nail, the head is just so tiny, okay? There's usually not enough, not enough girth on this to actually hold that wood in place. It'll just blow right through that little quarter inch wood. So what we use is we use the crown staple instead because that bridge here usually penetrates the surface of the wood and you set the gas pressure on your tank right. You can actually sink these so they're just underneath flush very easy to fill, but it really holds that wood in place so you don't end up with a lot of cracking and failure on your trim work. That'll save your bacon. Also very handy if you're good with using your tools and you want to do crown molding, you can do uh, like a coffered ceiling with your crown and you can put all your pieces together and nail them from the back side, okay, and by the nail so that you can actually attach and staple all of your crown together from the back side. That's generally where this came from because this is used a lot in finished carpentry. Last fastener is the one that's all the fun. <laughs> so, if you ever saw our shed video, you saw us attach the wood to the concrete, all right? And there are two different kinds of fasteners here I'm going to show you. Well, it's the same kind, actually. It's just different sizes. Now, here we go. I'll just show these two, Max. This one here is for attaching a metal stud to concrete. All right, so no matter where you're living, if it's a basement or you live slab on grade or you're doing commercial work, this is a great little tool. And this one is attaching two by fours to concrete. All right, the idea here is you're gonna get about an inch, inch and a quarter of actual nail in the concrete and that'll be perfect. So all this is, is you put your nail in, you, you, okay, in your little Remington gun. This is my favorite one, it's a new product on the market. It's got a trigger handle on it. All right, now these products come with different 22 caliber shots. This is yellow, they're color coded. You can take a look at the rating in the store. They'll be yellow, green, and red, and they have different strengths to it. I love the red, yellow whenever you're going into concrete. So the idea here is you make contact with your product, all right? You slide it down, you push it as far as you can go to lock that all in place, and then you pull the trigger. Clear. All right, is that fun? Now. It's not designed for little thin pieces of wood. <laughs> but when you're attaching metal to concrete, it works like a charm. All right. Boom. All right, now, the same way, you can put this charge in, and you can attach wood to concrete. Clear. All right. And you'll see, if you're going wood to wood, it goes right through the other side. But wood to concrete, usually the head sticks out a little bit, and it's perfect. Because then if it's in the wrong place, you can still get a crowbar in there and rip it off. I just showed you that because it's a lot of fun. And now this tool is a great little hand tool for homeowners and DIYers if you're doing a basement project. Or like I said, if you're building a shed or doing a renovation on concrete. This is a must-have tool and a must-have fastener because if you can attach things with these, they're not coming apart easily. So the last kind of fastener I want to show you is the camo fastener. It is a hidden deck fastener and it's designed because it's own hardware. It locks onto your six inch boards and you drive your screws on each side. And this helps you to screw from the angle instead of from the surface. It protects the life of your wood. I've been using camo now for about 10 years. Um, so if you want to see how that works and see how you can take advantage of all this information on fasteners, check out this deck build here. Okay, this is a project we did a few years ago when the channel was first getting started. It's an amazing outdoor living space, two-tier deck with glass railings. You're going to love it. Check that out and ask your questions in the comment section below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for?